Hi, and we're looking at Creo Parametric 6.0. This is an accelerated learning tutorial. Now, those of you who are aware of my tutorials, I have an exercise one tutorial that already goes through much more detail, almost an hour and a half long of the same exact exercise. This is an experiment to uh, accelerate that process and cut back down to under 10 minutes. So let's take a look here. First of all, if you need the instructional manual, you go to Vertanu. One.com. Find instructional manuals, go to Creo Parametric 6.0 Basics, and then you're going to go ahead. Once that pops up, it's a PDF. You're welcome to print it out. When you get that, turn to page 19, and it sets you on course for creating this. Now, all the additional details on how mouse buttons work and things like that uh, are covered in the, the much longer feature-rich version of this. So <clears throat> let's, let's begin. So as you can see here, the part that we're going to develop is a 3 by 5 block, half inch thick. It has this front area here, which is a 1.5 high and a half inch thick as well. And it has a through hole. Let's begin. Go to New, select Part, and label this capital E1. Never put spaces in between, by the way. Hit OK. Select this plane here and go to Extrude. Go to the rectangle tool and go to the origin right here. When you get the blue dot, click and drag in the upper right corner a small block. Make sure they're not equal. Click, middle click, and now the dimensions. Pull the dimensions out a little bit. Actually, you could keep them pretty close. Change the height to 5 and change the width to 3. If you can't see that very well, here's the refit button right up here. Or um, I have F on there, but that's only because I set it up. You'll, you'd have to watch exercise two of the feature-rich version. Okay, now that we have that, let's go to OK. And if you rotate, the rotate button is the wheel. If you hold it down like it's a button, move your mouse left and down or up, right, you'll actually see the uh, three dimensions here. You can also go up here to the saved orientations and standard orientation pretty much defaults to the uh, isometric, which for some reason the zoom to fit is kind of doing some weird stuff here. So be careful with that one. But that's front, top, and right that are up there as well. Let's go ahead and put in 0.5 for the thickness and then hit the green check mark and hit OK. And you can hit the fit button again. All right, now select this face, go to extrude, go to rectangle. Lower left corner, make sure it snaps and you get the blue dot. Click and drag this to the right, make sure it snaps to the right. Do not touch the midpoint. Go down a little bit lower, click, middle click, and middle click a second time. Now when I'm middle clicking, I'm talking about the middle mouse button, uh, or the wheel. If you have a wheel, just click on it like it's a button. All right, now you could click on this, and that. it's the left mouse button, and drag this to the right, double click, and type a 1.5 over that. Now hit OK, it should automatically start extruding. And again, if you hold the middle wheel button down, you can rotate. And right here, you can double click on that, and type in 0.5 and hit Enter. You can also do it up here like we saw earlier, hit OK. Now click on this face, go to extrude again, and we're gonna put the hole in. So let's go to the circle tool. This upper left quadrant, click and drag out what looks like mine, a, a, a hole, middle click two times, and pull this dimension up here and pull this one over here. Now this one that's offset from the left edge, that should be set to one inch. Double click on this, which is the diameter, and that's gonna be 0.75. And now we're gonna learn the dimension tool. So click on dimension, select the top edge of the block and the center point of the circle. Move your pointer over here to the left, look carefully where mine is, and you're going to, to drop the dimension. It's not a left or right mouse button, it's the middle wheel button. You push it down one time and it will release the dimension, and go ahead and type in one and hit enter. Hit OK. You can rotate again with the wheel button, and you can now go ahead and over here, instead of uh, this, we're gonna have it flip the direction, so here's the flip switch, or you could click on the pink arrow right here. Now notice it automatically turned on remove material. Let's set it to through all, and hit OK. Now, <coughs> We're done. So that's exercise one. In the training guide, as you've seen a moment ago, 
if you scroll down, you'll see that there's two labs that accompany this, Lab 24 and Lab 20, uh, I'm sorry, Lab on page 24, it's Lab 1 and then Lab 1B on page 25. Let's take a look at this. This looks like a letter F. It's just flipped over. It's a 2 by 3.51175250851. One. Let's go ahead and see if I can remember all those. Go to New, Part, and go ahead and save this as L1. Now, by the way, when you save them later, do a file, save as backup, and, and back them up wherever you like to. You don't have to rename them. That's the nice thing about backup. All right. Otherwise, it's set in a, a, a working directory, which you didn't set up. It was automatic pretty much. All right, select the front plane, go to extrude, go to the line tool this time. Click here and drag across a line. Click, middle click two times, and let's set that to 3.5. And now we'll hit refit. And you can also move this up and refit again. All right, now go back to the line tool. And that was just to scale this up. Go to this vertex on the left. When you get that yellow dot, click, drag up a line. Click, I drag to the right, a short little line here, click, drag down, click. Now stay away from any equals. See, look at this. See that little equal symbol to the right of my pointer? Stay away from those. Those will, uh, they're really nice when you need them, but right now we don't. So click, drag this up, make sure it's vertical. Now we get an equal, and this one's okay because they are supposed to be equal in this case. Click across here, stay away from equal. Any equals that appear, just keep going if that's the case. Click. Drag down and stay away from equals. Click, and now move this to where you could infer to the end line of that three and a half inch line you drew. Click, and then connect it. Middle click two times. If, you, if it shows up in pink, that means you made a good sketch. It's watertight boundary condition. If you did not, there's probably an opening or a gap. You usually see little red points. At that point, you can use the corner trim and click on the two entities and it'll trim it up. All right, let's go ahead and finish this. So this, uh, double click on this one, it's gonna be two inches. This one here will be one inch. And now I'm gonna go to the dimension tool to add the others. Click on this line to this line, and then middle click right up here. And that's gonna be 1.75. Click on this line here to this line here, middle click up here, it'll be 2.5. And now click on this line here to this bottom line here, middle click, and that's gonna be one. Click on this line here, move it over to the right, middle click, and that'll be 0.85. Enter, hit OK. Rotate, make sure it's set to a half inch, so double click, 0.5, you're done. Go on to the next one. To save this though, by the way, you go to File, do a Save As, and save as a backup because you already saved it as L1, or you, you named it, and this will enable you to locate, like I want it on my desktop, I just hit OK and it makes a copy for me on the desktop. Make sure you do that with all your parts, otherwise you might lose them. Go to New, Part, this is L1B. Hit OK. Select this time the top plane, go to Extrude. This is a, let's go and look at the drawing on page 25. <coughs> this is a 5 by 3, uh, one and a half inches thick with a cutout of one inch deep by one inch wide. So we're, we're gonna use a new tool. Let's hit the little arrow next to corner rectangle, find center rectangle. In the center, click and drag out the rectangle, make sure it's not equal. Middle click and then middle click, and it'll be three by five. Hit this button here. And you can drag them down if you want to get them even closer. Oops, just click and drag. You can also turn off your planes if you don't wanna see them. All right, just remember you can turn them back on later. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add two center lines. Click on center line, go to the center, click and drag up a center line there. Click on the center, to the left, click. Those center lines are there for the mirroring tool. Go to the circle tool. Now over here, floating in space, stay away from any other geometry. Just draw a circle, don't let it snap to anything. Now, set that to 0.5. And let's go to dimension, select the center point to the top edge over here, middle click, and that's going to be 0.75. Select the center point to the left edge, go up here, middle click, and that's going to be 0.75. Now you could go and do all four of those if you like. Otherwise, since I drew the center lines, we're going to go ahead and learn how to mirror right now. So middle click two times. Select the circle, go to the mirror tool, and then click on the center line. 
and it should mirror it over. Let's try that again. I'll middle click two times. Now when I middle click, middle click is basically like hitting the escape key. Now I'm going to select this, hold control, select this circle here too. Make sure you hold control when you do this. Now go to the mirror tool and select the horizontal center line. And now it's mirrored over. Hit OK and rotate it a little bit with your wheel, uh, little mouse button. Change that to 1.5. Hit Enter. Select this face. Go to Extrude. Now, by the way, you could zoom up to any point just by uh, moving your pointer over it and scrolling with the wheel. So that will focus on whatever point you're looking. Just keep your, your pointer focused wherever you want to zoom up to. All right, now we go to center rectangle again. Click at the center here. Snap to this edge. Middle click two times. Change the width to 1.5. Hit OK. And now let's flip that direction. And make sure over here it's set to one inch deep. Hit OK. You are done. Now, if you want the more feature-rich content, remember this is experimental. I'm not sure if people are going to like it or not, but uh, it's for those of you who find it hard to watch a video for an hour and a half. And uh, there's a lot more content. If you go over here to um, Britannia 1, go to Videos and find Creo Parametric at the top. You'll see here is the full video on how to make these parts with many enhancements and 1.19 or so one in almost almost an hour and a half, not quite. And that concludes this exercise.